Hello, John Talley here with Partzilla.com. Today we're going to swap out the starter on our 2015 Kawasaki Mule Pro FXT. Turns out in the morning she'll crank up just fine, but as the engine gets heated up, it doesn't want to start after that, and that's caused by that Bendix not engaging with the flywheel, and then it doesn't want to start. So, there's only one part we're going to need, and that's going to be the starter assembly. And if you need that part number, why don't you check that link in the description below, and that's going to carry you straight to a shopping cart that's ready to go. Now, if we're not working on the exact make and model that you're working on, just head over to our website at Partzilla.com. It's very intuitive to use. You just go in and choose your manufacturer, year, the model, and then drill down to whichever particular component that you need for your application. Now, if you're still having a little bit of trouble, give us a call. That's what we're here for. We can be reached at 877-473-4595. So, other than that, we're just going to need some basic tools, and I'll call those out as we go along. So, let's get started. So, it all starts off by just getting the bed to lift back. I've already unlatched it on the other side. If you're familiar with a mule, that goes back, really easy to do, and lift it up. And where we're heading is right down here. It actually has a plastic cover on it, so you may have mistaken that for part of the, the cover or hose back there, but that's actually the starter. What we're going to do first, before we actually put a wrench on it, is go over and disconnect the battery, because the last thing I want to do is make contact on that battery wire and put on a spark ship. So let me run around to the other side. I'm gonna pull the negative and then we'll start pulling this thing apart. And this is just a 10 millimeter. Just loosen it up, should break free. Push it out of the way to where it can't reconnect to that battery post. All right, with that done, we can get started on the other side. So let's start off by getting all the bolts for the converter cover out and then get it out of the way. Now they're gonna be 15 10 millimeter bolts that we're going to be after and you're going to need a pretty wide arrangement of extensions as well as a shallow and a deep 10 millimeter to access all of them. I want to forewarn you as an overview we will end up pulling the outer cover, the belt, the drive pulley, the driven pulley and then the back side of that housing all of that has to come out of the way before we can get to those two bolts that are actually holding the starter in place. It's fairly involved but if you follow along I can save you a lot of money instead of having to take your unit to the dealership. Probably should have done this in the beginning just to give myself a little bit more room to work. I'm going to go ahead and get these little plastic rivets out of the way, remove this inner fender, pull this outer cover so you can more easily see what I'm doing in there and then we'll dive back into it. All right, next, let's go ahead and get our bearing carrier out. There's going to be three 12 millimeter bolts. Just make sure when you're removing it, not to lose the dowel pins. And we're going to need to clean that up a little bit before we put it back together. Next, we're going to use an impact, knock it off. Remember, this is a reverse thread. All right, what I'm going to try now is just a little bit of gentle prying on the back side. I don't want to push on it too hard, scar up anything, or worse yet, break it. I mean, I barely had to move it. So we've got our driven pulley loose. Let's go ahead and work on the drive, and then we'll just pull them off together. And you'll notice that there's a hole right at the end of the shaft, about a quarter inch. And what we're going to use is just a regular slide hammer that I've adapted a little bit. What I've done is use one of the, the pullers and I just welded on a uh, stainless steel bolt to the end of it. Now what you could do is head to your hardware store, get a 5 8 by 18 pitch thread bolt, do the same thing. So you'd have the nut on the end and then you'd have the bolt welded to it. So we're just going to attach that to the end of our puller, slide it in that hole, then pop it out. You shouldn't have to pop it hard and when you don't want to pop it so hard that you actually dump it out onto the floor. That's all it takes. Now Kawasaki, of course, makes a special tool to do that, but you know, a couple of bucks at the hardware store and a little bit of welding, you're good to go. Because all we were really fighting is just the splines and an O-ring in there. That's the only thing that was actually holding it in place. Now we can go ahead and lift out the drive clutch. Let's get that belt off of there. And when you pull your belt, 
make note of which way it was on there. So Kawasaki is facing me. That's the way we want it to go back on. These are in really good shape. Let's remove the air duct next and you're going to need a six millimeter socket to do it. Next, let's go after these two Phillips screws. Now there's just one zip tie at the bottom of the ductwork that we need to cut because it's holding on to part of the wiring harness. All right, there's no need to remove the duct. We just need to get it up and out of the way. This should be far enough. Let's start working on our cover bolts and they're gonna be 12 millimeters. And keep in mind, you've got a couple that are hidden back behind this cover. These five. And there's one over here to the side that's up front. One more I need to get to at the top of the housing. But the two that are gonna be more difficult to access are on the bottom. So to access those, we have to drop the skid plate. Told you this was gonna be fun. Now this should be the last one. It's a 17 millimeter all the way up top. And that's an oil passage back there. There we go. That should have it now. All right guys, it is separated. It was pulled away from the actual plate where the starter is mounted. And that's what we're after. Now, if you were going to remove it all the way, you would have to remove the exhaust system as well as the thermostat housing uh, along with the, the piping. I didn't want to have to drain the fluid out of this thing. So it's back far enough now to where I can get to those final two bolts that are actually holding the starter in place. All right, what we're going after next are the electrical connections. And down below the intake, you're going to find a 13 millimeter bolt here, which is your battery cable and then the trigger is an eight millimeter right here. Now all this is right below the intake. So we're gonna reach in from the back with a deep well eight millimeter. And there it goes. Next, we're gonna use a deep well 13 to go for the battery cable. Now if you haven't disconnected your battery, you definitely wanna do it now. Otherwise, you're going to have a, a firework show. Now you just need to pull the wires off the post. Get those two 10 millimeters that are going through the plate and going into the starter. Reach in from the back. I'll get that cover off. And it is sealed into it. There you go. Now, wasn't that easy? Now it's just a matter of getting everything cleaned back up, get the new one, get it sealed, start putting it back together. Basically all these different mated services, even going on the other side of the, uh, the starter itself, they all have to be sealed up. Now I'm actually using the three bond that's recommended by Kawasaki. We'll begin with the starter. You can get away with using like a Honda Bond or HT, which is for high temp, or you can go with like Yamaha Bond or even the Permatex uh, Gray. Biggest difference is mine's black, yours is not. But it is important that you get all of these different surfaces sealed back up because we don't want water getting into this area where the uh, flywheel is. So follow along, let's get it sealed back up without making too much of a mess. If there's grease or oil anywhere in there where it will not allow it to seal up, you're gonna have a problem there. Next, let's put on what they call a dampening cover because it will be tough to do once we actually get it in position. And it basically just snaps over it for the most part. It looks like it's ready to go. Now we're just gonna guide it up in there and you wanna make sure that you've still got the two dowels that are in that plate in there. Right now they're just kinda of hanging in place we go to push it in, we may need to push from the other side, making sure that they go into the dowel slots on the starter itself. So I've got the starter sitting in place, but to get it to line up, we need to go ahead and put the, the mounting bolts through, and you want to go ahead and get some Loctite on there. And once I get them set in place, we're going to get a torque wrench and put them to 18 foot-pounds. Next, let's focus on getting the wiring back on. We're going to do the, uh, the trigger lead first, which was a 8mm. Uh, 
And now we can go for the, the battery wire, and it's a 13 millimeter nut that's gonna go on there. Get that rubber cover back over the end of it. Well, the starter is on, but now we are far, far away from uh, being finished. What I'm doing here is just using the bungee cord so I can hold this in one place, because what we're gonna do is use some contact cleaner, go around the surfaces, get them cleaned up, make sure there's no dirt on them. Then I'm gonna apply that three bond to it. At that point, we can release it. I recommend gloves for doing this and just do it in small sections because once you start, you've got about 20 minutes to get it assembled before it starts to set up. We're going to that area around the secondary driven clutch and then you've got the larger section that actually goes up to the plate. So let's release it carefully. Go ahead and lift it up and get it in place. So we're going to start back at the back on the uh, where you would have the driven clutch. So all these bolts that we're about to install, all the M8 thread bolts, they all take 15 foot pounds and they're various lengths. And we're going to show you a diagram of where they go back. Next, let's go for this larger one. It's right up at the top. And that one's going to go to 70 foot pounds. So with that one torqued down, that completes getting the back half of the casing put back together. Now let's go ahead and get our duct work reconnected. So I've got the boot on, now we've got the clamp in place. Make sure the boot's all the way up on this section because it'll try to flip on the inside. Now don't forget these two Phillips that actually hold that duct work in place. The other one goes right here. Last piece of ductwork. When you put this one on, it actually has a, a notch that lines up with this casting. That'll tell you or show you which direction it needs to be put on. So before we slide the clutches back in place, let's go ahead and add in some new grease. The splined area, the actual engine coupling. And then a little bit more to the input shaft of the transmission. Then we can get our clutches back on. And what we're going to do here is open up the sheaves on the driven clutch. We're going to go ahead and put the belt on it and then slide it up into the case. Make sure the belt is going the same way it came off. Okay, looks like it needs to be going left to right. At that point, we can go ahead and take the, the drive clutch, get the belt around it, and then push it into position. Remember, there's no bolting it in at this point, but you have to push a little bit hard to get it past the O-ring. Well, let's go ahead and at least get our driven clutch bolt in there temporarily and then we'll get it torqued later. Now we can release the sheave. Next let's clean up our cage just a little bit, put some new grease and we can go in and get this in place. You don't have to but I'd recommend putting just a little bit of Loctite on these three. You can go with the blue. Go ahead and put 18 foot-pounds on each one of those. Now that we've got the carrier in place, let's go back and tighten down our driven clutch bolt. And remember, it's going to be reverse thread. And of course, they make a special tool to do this, but all you really need to do is just put in a couple of uh, M8 bolts and then hold it with any type of bar. Just make sure you're going across both points. And now we're going to set our torque to 69 foot-pounds. And that'll do it. All right, now let's get that cover back on. Before you put the outer cover on, make sure that the seal is still in good shape. This one looks to be okay. So let's wiggle it in there and get this thing finished up. Now the cover is held in place by 15 of these bolts. What I usually try to do is get three of these in a triangle to start with. That more or less centers the cover, makes it easier to get the rest of them on. Before we get too much further along, let's go ahead and plug in this temperature sensor, get it routed, and then fold this little hole down over it. Well, all right, guys, that wraps this one up. We're down to just some uh, plastic, a few screws, rivets, and then, of course, the skid plate that uh, goes under the bottom, and then close up the bed and go take it for a spin. Well, listen, if you need any parts for your machine, why don't you come see us at partzilla.com and we can get you taken care of. Have any questions or comments? 
why don't you leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Hey, if you need the parts, the exact parts that we use for this machine, why don't you check that link in the description below and it can carry you to a shopping cart that is already ready to be checked out. Also, if you like what you see, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Listen, we just want to say thank you for shopping here with us at Partzilla, and we will see you in the next video. Have a great day.